Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your first integral of the day for 2025, and it was sent in by a loyal subscriber, so thank you for sharing this integral. I had a grand old time solving it. I'm not being sarcastic. I really had a nice time. So if you guys want to pause the video and try it on your own, I'll give you a hint. You don't need to do anything more than a simple U substitution and just a little bit of basic algebraic manipulation with this guy. Nothing wild, okay? Don't go busting out the trig sub. All right, so to start off, we did something similar um, in that countdown to 2025 series of integrals. X to the sixth plus one can be factored because it's a sum of cubes. So if you'll remember, let's think of X to the sixth as X squared cubed plus, and then we have one cubed. And so it'll factor into x squared plus 1 times x to the 4th minus x squared plus 1. So that's how I started off. So let me rewrite my integral now as x to the 4th plus 1 over this lovely factor denominator. Okay, at this point, no u sub will work out nicely. Because if you're thinking to let u be x squared which I did in a previous problem that was a little different, there is no nice du to get absorbed here, okay? So that's not the way to go. But the next thing that stood out to me was x to the fourth plus one looks so similar to this factor here in the denominator. Let me see if I can manipulate it and cancel things out. So the next move I made was I subtracted x squared and added x squared, okay? And then we can split this up now into two integrals, basically. So the first one's going to be x to the fourth. Let me put minus x squared next plus 1 over x squared plus 1, x to the fourth minus x squared plus 1, plus x squared. Are you guys okay? Over <laughs> x squared plus 1 times x to the fourth minus x squared plus 1 dx for all of this. So let me break down where everybody went just so you don't get lost, okay? x to the fourth plus one minus x squared, that's all right here. And then this lonely little x squared is right here. All right, we're gonna attack each of these separately. So this is integral number one, integral number two. Hopefully you could see though, integral number one, there's not really much to do because x to the fourth minus x squared plus one cancels. So then I'm just left with one over x squared plus one dx. Woo, fabulous. So antiderivative is arc tan of x or tan inverse of x. I'm gonna put plus c1 since we have another integral to evaluate and I just wanna end with nice and clean plus c at the end. So don't waste it now. Okay, second integral. We have x squared over x squared plus 1 over x to the fourth minus x squared plus 1 dx. I'm going to admit I spent too long staring at this guy playing around with silly options before I realized, hello, instead of leaving this denominator in factored form, I'm going to go back to how it was originally in the problem, x to the sixth plus 1. Mm-hmm then things should fall into place, hopefully. Hopefully you'll see it. x squared over x to the sixth plus one dx. Now I want you to think of x to the sixth as x cubed squared. Why do we wanna do that? Because then if we let u equal x cubed, du is going to be 3x squared dx, which we basically have up here, right? x squared dx. So one third du is x squared dx, and we can make a lovely u sub right now. Let me put the one third outside, du up top, over x cubed squared is now u squared plus one. <gasps> Easy breezy from here on out. So this is going to be one third tan inverse of u plus, that's right, c2. And then who was u? Why our good friend right up here, x cubed 
plus C2. And we're done, look it. That was not stressful, right? It looked like it was gonna be stressful. So we have to put everything all together now. I mean, you know me, I like a, a good little narrative. So we have tan inverse of X, that was it, plus one third tan inverse of X cubed plus C, where C equals C1 plus C2. And I, you know, I get comments often, why do you have to write C is C1 plus C2? When you're in differential equations, you have to keep track of those constants um, because they get manipulated and transformed. So I, I always want to instill good habits in my math students from the get-go so that later on when they take a class, they don't have to learn something new or break a bad habit. So I don't want you ever being sloppy with your constants of integration and then, you know, having to struggle in future math courses, okay? Did you like this one? I loved it. You guys are always more than welcome to email me, mathwithprofessorv at gmail.com. Send me any integral suggestions. I just, I have to be honest, I'm going back to work next week. So my free time is limited, sadly. Maybe one day, sooner than later, this YouTube channel will really take off so I could tone it back with the teaching. But until then, I'm hustling on both ends here, you know, on the YouTube front and in the everyday teaching full-time professor front. But I love it all. I love it all. And I love you guys so much. I think we have such a nice community here. So thank you guys for your support. Comment down below. Did you solve it? How long did it take you? Was any particular part tricky? I'm embarrassed. Integral number two, I forgot to multiply back out the denominator immediately. And there I was. I was going down a rabbit hole until I was like, oh, hello. This one's fun. So that's it. If you need to review any of your calc topics or techniques or anything else, then check out the playlists that are on my YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok till it's gone. We've got what, a week or so left. And I will be back sooner than later with more content for